Hello, Mom. Oh, see who finally deemed me worthy of their attention. Please, don't start. I haven't even started because I wouldn't even know where to begin if I wanted to. Mom, I just want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Oh, so now you remember that you have a mother. That's to say, if your party Valit ask if your mother still exists, you're going to open up your mouth and tell them yes? What have I done this time, Mom? Why are you always being so unnecessarily hard on me? Unnecessary are the useless wishes that come into my DMs every time there's a special holiday. I'm sick and tired of it. So you would rather I don't say anything on special days like today? I'd rather you keep your wishes in the same way you keep your money to yourself. Oh, so that's what all of this is about. I see. You're always AWOL when I come calling for financial assistance. But you're always so eager to send in wishes and measly guess when the holiday comes calling. Save yourself the entire show. I don't need it. You're being cruel, Mom. Those gifts are nothing but miserly. Nobody wants a bouquet of pricey flowers. I can't eat Corinthians. Neither can I grow them in this godforsaken place you refuse to take me out of. So excuse my cruelty, dear daughter, but there's nothing thoughtful about roses and lilies. As always, you go down the entitled lane. I don't know why I even bother with you. You're my daughter. Of course I'll be entitled. <laughs> you forgot I was your daughter when you squandered Dad's trust fund for me on frivolities. We all make mistakes. Ugh, but I'm not done just yet, Mom. You forgot I was your daughter when you would rather host several parties and watch me juggle three jobs while I studied hard to keep my college scholarship. You forgot I was your daughter when your golden son brought troubles that are deep into the resources we both inherited from our father's hard work, too. You indulge him, even. Every time he asked, you gave. But when it was my turn, you advised me to either work harder or to utilize what I had to make up for what I lacked. Even on days when you could afford to help out, I climbed my way up the podium of a success I now stand on today by passing through the literal worst. And you stood on the sidelines, mocking and scorning me every step of the way. Well, it all turned out well for you, didn't it? You should be thanking me. And that is why I thank you, in my own way. A way you barely even deserve. All I'm making you realize right now is that you're in no place to dictate how I decide to give you gifts, or be entitled to whatever I have. You did absolutely nothing to earn it. At least I gave birth to you. And your birth was the most painful experience of my life. It's sad and funny at the same time that you're too proud to see the reason. Even after it's spelled out so obviously in black and white. Who you call him proud? How dare you? Of course. Argue away. That's better than a humble apology, after all. I don't even know what I was expecting when I decided to type my heart out in this episode. You can throw the gifts I've sent you away if you do not like them. And yes, I'll listen to your request and make sure to never cross your DMs again or to give you any good wishes or gifts or anything. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Hey, sis. Oh, hi. What's up? Mom told me everything you said to her just yesterday. That's what's up. Okay, and? And it was not cool to say all those things to her. Did she tell you it was her who started it? Anyways, that's your beef with her. Take care of it. Aw, oh, thanks.
Thanks. You're too kind. Spare me your sarcasm, Iza. I need a few bucks. Oh, okay. I'm sure you get some at work today. Isn't it payday? Stop playing dumb, sis. You know I currently have got no job. And how is that? I promise to reimburse you in a few days, Max. Well, sorry, but I don't loan money to people who don't have a source of income to conveniently pay me back. Oh, Isa, don't be a stick in the mud. I want to invest this money in a sweet deal. The money will mature in a matter of days. I'll pay back double after it does, sis. Just do this one favor for me. I promise you won't regret it. <laughs> I think I've heard that one before. Try using another excuse. I'm serious, sis. I'm for real this time. No gimmicks. Well, good luck to you then. Take your proposal to the bank. I'm sure they'll be more interested investing in your business gesture than I can ever be. Especially since you're promising 100% returns on investment. Good luck, bro. Don't do me like this, Isa. You and I know the bank will never give me the amount I'm asking for. And how much are you asking for? Do you promise to give me if I tell you? Yeah, I don't make promises like that. Okay. It's about 15 grand. But hear me out. It's for a project that will enable me to cash out at least 60 grand. So that's a fair amount for investment. $15,000? What on earth gives you the impression that I will readily part with such a huge amount of money? Because you're my sister, and because you're stupid rich? And because I'm also a businesswoman, I don't have that amount of money just idling around. Even if I did, you would be the last person I'd ever entrust such an amount to. I didn't get rich by blindly throwing lump sums to the dogs like you, and I'm not about to start now. Did you just call me a dog? A stray one at that. Now I see what mom meant when she called you a wicked practitioner of witchcraft. You would treat your own family like stray dogs and give to outsiders? That's just plain cruelty. I see that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But I'll assure you the same way I did mom. Emotional blackmail doesn't work on me. Have a nice day! I won't wish the horrible things mom did. I'll just get the money elsewhere and prove to you that you're not God. You'll be hearing from me soon when I finally hit it big. And just make sure you don't need my help then. Because I'll pay you back in your own coin. Hi. Oh, so you're back to ignoring me again. Classic of you to call me proud a few days ago, when indeed you're the queen mother of pride. Sometimes I just wish Ben was in your position instead. He'd never treat his mother this way. Yes, I know he would treat you worse for sure. And nothing is stopping Ben from being in my position. Oh, I forgot. He dropped out of Harvard and then out of Oxford because their mode of learning didn't flow well with him. <laughs> You're a fine one to talk when you didn't even attend such a prestigious school. Ugh, you forgot that he came to my cheap institution when I was in my final year. He didn't last till the end of the semester, Mom. Well, unlike you, he couldn't sleep his way into good grades, so what are you talking about? You should know that I'm already used to your scorn by now. But it's sincerely too early for this show of black bile. I have to get to the office. Yeah, yeah. Rub it in my face that I'm jobless. 
Come on, have at it. Keep your lame wishes to yourself. I need your help, my daughter. It's a life or death situation, Isabel. Please don't ignore me. What is it this time, Mom? It's your brother, Is. What happened to him? I hope you're not about to gaslight me for not loaning him a sum of money his entire life's work cannot tithe. He's in trouble. A huge mess. If you're trying to scare me, Mom, just let me have you know that it's not working. Tell me what is going on, or I'll leave you on here to keep conversing with yourself. Fine. Ben got into trouble with loan sharks. They're very dangerous people. These ones aren't interested in involving the police in their affairs with defaulters. They're actually after your brother's life. Well, that actually sounds like a lot of trouble. You may not want to think it's not legit, but here's proof. They're not even after their money anymore, is. They just want to deal with Ben and take his life. Look! He was beaten up real bad. He's still in the hospital now. I'm so sorry about this, Mom. I don't even know what to say. I know you're upset with me. I know you also believe you do not owe us anything. But you wouldn't be able to live with yourself if he got worse and worse. When you could have helped. Blood is still thicker than water. Remember that. But you just said these people are no longer interested in their money, Mom. I don't know these loan sharks either. And I don't even think they'll be willing to listen to me if I volunteer to plead with them. How else do you want me to help in this situation? They came to the hospital to threaten his life again. Nowhere around here is safe for him anymore. Is if you could just take him for the time being, that would be a lot of help. Absolutely not. Mom, I love you and Ben, but there's no way I'm bringing this trouble into my house. How can you even ask this of me? You live in an estate uptown. Your estate and houses are gated. There's no way those people will get in there, regardless of the danger they pose. This place is their domain. They can do anything they want because they have the local PD in the palm of their hands. But up there, they have no say, no control. They won't be able to break into your area without being fished out by the police or the private security personnel you all have. I thought long and hard before coming to you with this plea. I want the safety of my son, but that wouldn't mean I'll do that at the risk of your own safety. You're my child too. Uh, I don't know, Mom. I can't trust that Ben will even behave himself around here. Did you see the picture I sent of him? Ben can barely even move. He's too out of it to want to come by any shenanigans. And I've taken care of the threat by the time he begins to get better. He'll just be in and out of your place before he even has time to cause trouble. You know what, Mom? I find it highly suspicious that you're trying so hard to persuade me into this. Isabel, I know that I've done a lot to keep your guard as high as the sky when it comes to me or your brother. But I actually regret it. That should also not blind you from seeing how much I truly care about both of you. I'm just desperate to see my son survive this. I've swallowed my entitlement and pride and I'm begging you. I don't want to see my son dead. It's up to you if you decide you want to help or not. But even if you wouldn't factor in my desperation, consider the state of your brother's life and think about what your father would have wanted you to do. Give me a little bit of time, Mom. Let me try to process all of this.
is, you need to see the latest threat sent to his phone. I know I told you to take your time, but time might not be on our side to save your brother if you delay any longer. Please do something. Mom, I want to believe everything you've said is true. That's why I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. I'll send my driver to pick him up from the hospital tomorrow. Just send me the address. Oh, thank God. Thank you so much, my daughter. I am eternally indebted to you for the help. I can't express how relieved I feel right now. Thank you. It's all good, Mom. Just share the hospital address with me. It's a long drive from there. Almost 20 hours. I'm aware of that, Mom. That's why I need to know the hospital he's at, so we can start planning when my driver will leave. It's a hospital that opened two years ago. The one close to the train station. This doesn't really qualify as an address, Mom. I'm not sure of the address. You know how it is here with addresses. I'll ask the nurse attending to Ben and send it to you. That's fine by me. Just let me know as soon as you get it. And for what it's worth, I sincerely hope I won't regret this. Good morning, Mom. You still haven't sent the hospital's address. Please let me know if you've changed plans. Oh, no. We haven't changed plans at all. We just wanted to be sure that a nurse would be available to accompany him. In fact, due to the severity of his condition, the hospital has offered to bring him over there in their ambulance. But we're not able to afford such luxury at the moment. I think bringing him over in an ambulance would be a better idea. Yes, they would have medical personnel attending to him in the van, should anything come up. Plus, it raises less suspicion than having a fancy car pick him up. No offense. I was only trying to say those guys watching him might follow an exotic car. But I think it's okay if only the ambulance that leaves the hospital. Okay, that's true. Let me have the account details of the hospital and the cost of their ambulance services. I'll Venmo the bills. Okay, thank you, my daughter. I'll do that ASAP. Well, your as soon as possible certainly isn't soon at all. The ambulance is here and you still haven't sent their details. Oh, I'm so sorry, my daughter. When I went to the reception to ask them, the nurses there said it was possible to take the money when they got there. I figured that would be easier for you, but it slipped my mind to inform you. I'm sorry. I hope it didn't cause any problems whatsoever. Well, the officials were determined to have paid via POS. But other than that, it was all good. Oh, that's good to know. I find the adamancy very suspicious, though. But it's all good. I used a card that had the credit limit almost maxed out, so if they planned on mirroring the card for any gimmicks, they would definitely fail. Oh, that's good. You're a very smart woman. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten to where I'm at now. True, true. Thanks once again for helping us out. You didn't have to, but you did. I'm very grateful for that. There's no need to thank me, Mom. I'm only taking care of Ben for two weeks, after all. You must have fixed all this mess by then. Even a week is enough for it all to go back to normal. I wonder how you plan on fixing everything, though. You don't have to worry about that. I'll handle it. Just keep me updated on how my son is doing. Was he awake when he got there? Was he in better shape? Don't worry about him, Mom. You rest assured that he's going to be safe and well taken care of as long as he's with me. He looks a tad better than the pictures you sent, though. I wish him a speedy recovery. Thank you so much, my daughter. It's all good. 
Let's chat later, yeah? That's all right, Is. Sending my love to you both. Hello, Mother. I know you're there. I can see that you're online, but you're refusing to reply. I have typed up so many angry messages and deleted them because I'm more annoyed with myself than with you. And that thieving son of yours. I cannot bring myself to believe that you would stoop to this level to rip me off. Is that what I get from letting go of my guard to help out a family in need? I left the house for the first time this week for just 24 hours, only to come back to a thoroughly vandalized and robbed house. Tell me what on earth I did to deserve this. I've been waiting for you to tell me why you'd hate your own daughter so much. Hey, what's going on? I have no clue what you're on about. Where's Ben? Did something happen to Ben? Please spare me the performance. I'm really not in the mood for that. I just want you to let me know why you would do this to your own daughter. Just why? Help me understand what's going on. I'm very confused right now. I already sent men to your place only to find the house empty. I should be the one asking what is going on, but I am not even going to bother playing dumb. I'm in on the dirty games you all play to climb over my defenses and get to me. Well, I do not fault you for that. I'm simply going to ask you very nicely to inform your son to return the jewelry set he stole from my wardrobe. I can forget all the rest, but not that. All I've been able to decipher is, your house was robbed and vandalized and Ben is nowhere around? This is sending all the warning signs is, what if I was wrong? What if the dangerous loan sharks Ben was involved with were able to gain access to your house? And they did all of that and took my son away. Ben may be in terrible danger here. We need to inform the police. Drop the act already. Just stop. Do you really think I'm a fool? Do you think because I believed your fictional ideas and the special effects of your makeup artist, I'm as dumb as believing this bullshit? Just let me have the jewelry set already. I'll let you have the rest you took to pay for the production value you brought to my doorstep. If nothing else, however, that jewelry set is something I will not let go of. And when it comes to informing the police, I'm way ahead of you. I'll rethink the consequences I have planned for all of you if you just return that jewelry set. But if you decide to be unrepentive and continue in your acting, then prepare to face the worst, because it is definitely coming your way. You do know that it's very crazy of you to insinuate that your brother is behind all of this. You'll even go as far as involving me in all of that. I'm appalled. Unlike you, I don't make accusations without concrete proof. I have footage of your son looting my house. And thanks to his stupidity and carelessness, he didn't only leave his phone behind, he left it without a password. So yes, I'm privy to all your plotting and planning and chats. And you can count on the fact I'm capable and intent on suing you and your moron of a son. What? I don't care what proof you think you have but you cannot prove any punishable crime in court. Just wait and see how much trouble you and your delinquent son are in if I do not get that set. And don't even try to go down the route of emotional blackmail. This was the final straw that pushed me past my limit. If it'll take me pulling my status and wealth around to get retribution for all your wrongdoings combined, I won't even think twice before doing just that. You sound like the set is very important to you. 
but it was the most valuable thing we were ever able to recover from your house. You took credit cards and even cash. I need that back, not because of the literal value, but because it means a lot to me. I don't even have to see any of you. I'll send my driver to wherever you are to pick it up. And you better pray to whatever god that you serve that it is still in good condition. Well, if it means that much to you, you may as well loan us a little bit of money in exchange for it. What? According to you, it's not the money that means anything to you, but a sentimental value. So give us a loan for it, and we'll hand it over to you. I can barely believe my ears right now. You plotted against me, took advantage of my kindness, vandalized my house, and showed no remorse whatsoever for any of this. And now you're negotiating with me to buy back what you stole from me? <laughs> wow. You have left us with no choice, Isabel. We had to do what we had to do, and I have no regrets about any of it. Just let me know if you'll be taking the offer, or if I should consider selling it to someone else. All I'm asking is 15 grand. And then we can pretend that all of this never happened. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard at your, at your craftiness. Oh, I've always known why you married Dad. But I thought you'd outgrown your love for gold digging. But no, gold digging is not just what you love to do for fun. It's part of who you are. And I'm ashamed of every time I ever called you mother. Try getting a good lawyer with your newfound fortune, Jenny, because the hour of mercy has ticked its last. You do not scare me. I'm not afraid of you just one bit. If you want to fight, then I'll show you just how much of a fighter I am. You're so crafty, so shrewd when it comes to your foolproof plans. Yet you are unable to scheme yourself and your foolish son out of the ever-tightening claws of being broke. What a shame. Good luck in fighting, Jenny. One week after I gave the ultimatum for them to return the only thing left of my father's memories... Ben and Jeanette were tracked down and arrested. I made sure that on the same day they were charged to court on counts of robbery and vandalization of private property. Jeanette was able to get bail, but Ben wasn't. It wasn't until the course of the courtroom hearings that I finally realized that, as at the time my mother was negotiating with me regarding the jewelry set, her son had already found a buyer. They had already sold it up for $10,000. What had they done with the $25,000 worth of cash and valuables they'd stolen away from my house? They'd given more than half to a sketchy guy who had promised them that he had winning tickets to the lottery. The remaining half had gone into throwing a few lavish parties but mother and son threw parties in a bid to climb the social ladder, an endeavor that definitely failed. The entirety of their looted money didn't even last more than the week in which they'd looted it. They couldn't even afford to get a decent attorney. The hearings were swift, and the verdict was fate. Ben was sentenced to five years in prison without parole on counts of robbery, fraud, and other related crimes. Jeanette wasn't spared either for being an accomplice. She got three years parole sentence. It was a hard pill to swallow when the verdict was passed, but I felt oddly at peace. To me, it wasn't only their latest crimes they were getting convicted for. I feel as though I was finally getting justice for all the wrongdoings Jeanette perpetrated, and also encouraged her son to follow in her footsteps. Not only towards me, but also my father. 
I was finally getting the closure I deserved. Regardless of how I came under fire for sending my only surviving family to jail over inheritance, the weeks after their conviction were the toughest in my life. Or at least since I became financially stable. But I was able to deal with it head on. I was also able to find the jewelry set Jeanette and Ben sold. And I was able to buy it back. Although I had to pay almost $100,000 to get it back. But it was all worth it. I'm not sure what will happen after both Jeanette and Ben finish serving their sentences. But I'm more than prepared to remain stone-hearted when it concerns them.